Hello everybody, my name is Harshit Kamat. Uh, I'll be handling uh, two subjects as I told you previously in my introductory uh, video. Uh, controls and signals. So this is introduction to signals and systems. Alright, uh, as um, I am previously mentioned, most of the colleges have removed this subject uh, from their curriculum, which has caused some sort of mental block in the students. Kindly, I would like to tell you one thing before I start or before I get into the syllabus and we start digging into the problems and all of it. That please take it very slowly, this particular concept. I will go step by step. I will explain every detail to you. Reason being that if you are able to understand signals and systems in depth, you can understand control or anything related to signals or any of these two words are there in any subject, you will be able to understand that very easily. Mind you, systems is there even in power systems. Power electronics also has all of these things. All of those uh, uh, subjects and chapters you will be able to easily analyze if you know signals and systems. Obviously, uh, the reason why this subject is very easy, I will tell you. The syllabus is not very complicated. If anybody will ask you what is the uh, syllabus of signals and systems, it has exactly only two words, signals and systems. First, we will talk about types of signals. Then we will talk about type of systems. Then we will see what are the tools in which you have to analyze them. Okay, so to start with, first thing is what I'm going to handle for all of you is what all are the types of signals. Okay, see when I am talking to you right now, all right, this is a speech that is coming, this is also a signal, all right, the tube lights that you have in your house that uh, is having some sinusoidal input coming to it of 220 volts, okay, so that is a signal, all right, so basically what is happening, anything right from your communication to power systems everything is generating signal and signal generation is happening in a physical uh, stretcher or a structure that particular thing is called as a system okay for starters so as i told you first thing i'll be handling is types of signals in types of signals what we are going to see i will tell you Under types of signals, we have different different categories, periodic, aperiodic signals. Okay, so uh, since uh, for students, uh, basically uh, the business when it comes to education is in terms of marks. So let me talk in that language itself. All right. From types of signals, you'll definitely get one of the two questions. All right. It will either be from periodic or aperiodic signal to find the period. Or if by chance the paper is a little bit, they want to check your knowledge a little bit in depth, they will ask you uh, even and odd signals based questions. All right. So that is the next variant, even and odd signals. Okay. Periodic, aperiodic, even and odd signals. All right. Continuous and discrete signals. Because of that continuous and discrete thing, your signals and system syllabus has boomed up almost twice. All right. Because whatever we do in continuous has to be done in discrete also. To an extent where that uh, Professor Rao who will be taking your network analysis and uh, power systems, he will also be handling digital electronics for all of you. In that, he will definitely ask you to refer to one of my lectures here, wherein I will be discretizing a continuous signal and telling you how using a simple switch and a DC source you are able to generate discrete signals. How a continuous signal has become discrete. Discretize right so third category is continuous and discrete signals all right then because of that you have because of this uh, this distinction your entire syllabus is divided into two halves whatever you do for one should be done for the other then uh, next variant which is very important for you in power electronics point of view is energy and power signals okay and one common question which everybody are confused what is the power of an energy signal what is energy of a power signal okay people by heart this okay they try to do something so anyways if you have to buy heart i will show you a shortcut to buy heart that also but with that we'll also understand that if by chance you forget that shortcut power of an energy signal energy of a power signal what it should be if you have forgotten that also you should still be able to manage and get the right answer i will teach you that concept also and why is it important in power electronics is because in that particular thing you will be calculating average power rms power and all of it that you can further use it in calculating some sort of efficiency of a converter okay power converters are there efficiency you can calculate you know how much if by chance you are connecting a load okay some waveform is coming through the load how what is the uh, power that it is going to consume by integrating it and all of it right so 
because of this this first category of uh, first category that i'm going to handle types of signals is very very important second thing is types of systems all right now we have categorized signals there is one more category which i did not mention the reason being that that's just a theoretical one okay there are uh, uh, but i definitely will also take that because it was asked in this year's ies prelims that recently we released the key for as you all know right so there are something called as uh, deterministic and random signals okay one question was asked nobody will expect actually i'll tell you what is happening in today's competitive exams no they will they know that you'll obviously prepare for some of the questions they'll definitely not ask that they'll ask something else and what they are asking you should be prepared for that also and that is our speciality we will stress on those points more because we know that those points will be left by you people okay you people ignore it because usually this portion uh, this uh, random and uh, deterministic signal portion is just four lines in a textbook okay but within that four lines they formed a question and if you would have not studied that you would have lost that easy mark if you would have studied that you would be one step closer to being an engineering uh, services aspirant who has cleared the prelims right so that is also there in that next is types of systems as i was telling you in types of systems we will see on what basis we classify systems all of you know network analysis uh, professor rao told you that he is going to teach you something called a superposition theorem okay superposition why uh, what is the superposition theorem from that day he is telling in network analysis that there is something called as linear sources non linear sources how does he know from where did he get that knowledge he got that knowledge from the fact that we are analyzing that particular thing in types of systems over here we will see if a system is linear non linear by following superposition we will see if it is time variant or time invariant we will see if it is causal non causal memory less memory having memory all right then we will see one last part in that that is called as stability or bebo stability so in this particular subject in types of systems when i will be handling here okay when i will be handling types of systems over here bebo stability proof will be only for two lines okay you will just perform one operation and say bebo stable or not stable but one entire subject is designed particularly to analyze that for lti systems which is linear time invariant system that is called control systems which i will be also handling that is the reason i told you if you are able to do this one subject you can understand any subject after that okay once these two concepts are done we will slowly get into the tools and techniques that you require for representing lti systems for analyzing them and for designing if if there is any sort of design that you want to do how to use these tools for designing right so after these two are done we will concentrate on representation of relationship between signals and systems what is that see any system is there it has to have an input output also should be there right so if it is an lti system how do you represent the input output relationship how do you represent how do you get it mathematically for all of that we have to perform some operations some mathematical operations it was not that signals and systems was a subject in itself which invented something no it is a mathematical concept there is a mathematical operation called convolution which everybody feels very difficult because they feel that uh, we i am not able to see the overlap i have not understood only why people are flipping the signal which signal to flip and then ask it to pass all that all of those tensions that people have if you know that that is and if you don't know also there is no problem it is my promise to you that if you let in my class you will get all of those solutions very easily without even solve having to solve the entire convolution problem just by looking at the limits of the signal also you will be able to say where there is partial overlap where there is full overlap where there is no overlap whatsoever the reason why i am stressing this point very much is because in the gate exam or any competitive exam you will hardly you will have limited time with one question and if you are busy sitting and solving the whole of convolution problem which is pretty big what will happen uh, and uh, just to reach a simple conclusion like where it is partially overlapped if you are solving a big one entire page that is not efficient right so i will teach you the tricks for that but that is applicable only to lti systems and you don't have to worry you don't have any other system in your syllabus you are not going to do non linear or time varying systems in your syllabus so we are going to learn next thing is convolution theorem convolution okay once you have learned about convolution theorem again because uh, as i told you signals and systems is massive because we have already categorized it into discrete and continuous so we have to learn convolution in discrete convolution in continuous 
okay now once we have le learnt that another representation of linear system is called as LCCDE. If you hear this particular short form in any of my lecture, the full form for that is linear constant coefficient differential equation. The thing is, I am pretty lazy. Uh, I do not write the entire thing always. So once again, let me repeat it. It is linear constant coefficient differential equation. These linear constant coefficient differential equations will be written as LCCDE which is nothing but a representation of LTI systems and if you are feeling very much worried or trying to think what he is talking about this is something that you have already done in your signals and systems it is just that you do, uh, rather in your control systems course rather uh, the moment you get a differential equation you might have seen this beautiful very easy question that you all jump on immediately that is that they give you a differential equation they say initial condition is zero uh, find the transfer function. The moment you take Laplace of that differential equation, you get transfer function, you people all feel happy and elated. That's really good. That's the spirit that I want. But what you have to see there is you are able to apply that because it's an LCCD and it's an LTI system representation. All right. So we will see how to solve them in time domain. See what is happening. Most of you directly apply Laplace transform and try to get it. That's very good. But we'll also see how to solve them in time domain. How to solve differential equations in time domain. What is forced response? What is natural response? And where will it be useful? If you'll see network analysis, Professor Rao is going to take transient analysis for you. Transient uh, networks uh, will be there. All right. Or if by chance, for example, he is trying to say that charging of a capacitor, charging of an inductor in all of those cases or LCR circuits. And if since we are also coaching you for IES, you people are going to do even network synthesis. All right. In all of those cases, no LCCD representations will be very useful for you. Okay, so after we have done LCCDs, this will somewhat complete the representation of systems. The next thing is now we will have some tools. All right, you all love to hear the word harmonics. Being an electrical engineer, it gives a sort of special feeling that we deal with harmonics. All right, from where did this harmonics come? And what are these harmonics? Basically, any any uh, signal that you have, provided there are some conditions that are met, which I will tell during the lecture. You can represent it as a sum of sinusoidals. There are some conditions. Again, I'm stressing on this. There are some conditions that are applied. Only then you can do it. What are those conditions? I'll come to that later. But if some conditions are followed, you can represent any signal as a form of a sum of sinusoids. Now, when you're representing it as a sum of sinusoids, that tool to represent that is called as Fourier series expansion. Now, again, you have to learn Fourier series expansion for continuous systems and for discrete time systems. All right. So I will write that as F S. Okay. And since it's continuous, uh, continuous uh, time signals also have to analyze discrete time signals also have to analyze. So the short form for that is continuous time Fourier series will be called CTFS discrete time Fourier series will call, be called as DTFS under this particular subheading. This is very important. This will be useful even for power electronics also. Okay. Total harmonic distortion you might have heard. Right. So the moment you see the signal, you can use this, the shortcuts that I will tell you in this particular chapter to find the total harmonic distortion without having any sort of trouble. You don't have to trouble your power electronic faculty for that. I am responsible. I take full responsibility of that particular part. After you have done this, this is a representation in time domain itself. Now let us go and try to take the signal into another domain. Okay. Taking it to another domain in the sense, taking it to a complex frequency domain or any sort of frequency domain. There are three transforms that are very essential, very, very essential. That is Laplace transform. Then you have Fourier transform. Then you have something called as Zeta transform. The speciality of Fourier transform is that Fourier transform has discrete part and continuous part also. So, so first we will talk about Fourier transform. Okay. Or rather, okay, before uh, we get into this, uh, all right. Uh, okay. Let us talk about Fourier transform. Once we talk about Fourier transform in both continuous and discrete, then we will talk about Laplace transform. All right. Uh, it can be interchangeable based on my plan on how I am tackling the other topics. I will tell you what it is. So after this, we have Laplace transform. The reason why I wrote Fourier up and then Laplace is here we will answer one very important question, which I'll answer even in controls that why the whole of control system is on Laplace transform itself. Why didn't we use Fourier? Okay. 
uh, transform in that. So I will tell you that. But mind you, Laplace transform does not have a discrete counterpart. For tackling that problem, we have one more transform for discrete only that is called Z transform. Z transform. So in Z transform, what is going to happen? One important question that is there is existence of Z transform. Okay, there is something called as region of convergence, which I will be handling for you. So you will be able to tell whether the Z transform of a particular thing is existing or not existing. All right. So <clears throat> the whole of signals and systems, let me tell you once again, that whole of signals and systems is not a third party subject or it's not an electronics and communication wala subject or nothing like that. It is just an amalgamation of all the tools that you will be using for all the other subjects of electrical engineering. Now, uh, Professor Rao also uh, is promoting this uh, two years course, uh, rather this three years course where you join in the second year and uh, proceed with your uh, preparation. The reason why we are doing that is we feel that in second year itself because signals and systems comes in fourth semester most of the times and all the analog, digital electronics and all come there. Ideally, in your uh, second year itself, you will be eligible to, if you were to be eligible to write gate, you would have cleared it because all the essential crucial subjects that form the basics have already been completed at that time. That's the reason it's suitable to start your preparation that time. All right. And this is one of the subjects that will lay the groundwork for all. So please do not get worried. We will, I will take you through this very slowly. I will teach every concept for you. I will tell you the significance of every step I am doing and you will be able to solve any question that will come to you. So with that, I want to uh, take your leave on this particular thing. Let me, see, uh, let me see you in the next lecture of signals and systems where I will be starting with types of signals without any delay. And uh, thank you very much.